Joe Biden. He has formally announced his campaign for re-election in 2024. Uh, he's already the oldest president, by the way, uh, and if he succeeded, he'd be 86 by the end of a second term. Does that matter, by the way? Because a lot of May is made, isn't it, about age. Uh, do you think age alone should be a reason to be, I don't know, struck out of politics? Is that it, you? Uh, you're 80, off you go. Is that fair or not? Um, anyway, what do you think if he was successful? Uh, do you think, uh, would it be a, a good thing for the UK or not? His re-election, I'll last out with you. I think Joe Biden is one of <clears throat> the most underrated politicians of my lifetime. He's a man who no one really rated, no one really kind of got behind, but he won. And he won comfortably in the end. He's got a great record on the economy in the States. Unemployment oh, is the lowest in 50 years. 500,000 jobs being put on every month in the, in, the, in the US economy. But for the UK, the most important thing is around foreign policy. Because if Trump had won, Vladimir Putin would have rolled straight through Ukraine. And we would have... Sorry? How, how do you Excuse know? me? No. Because there's ab you can just when Trump says it, the Vladimir Putin has made a fantastic play in terms of uh, in terms of invading Ukraine and he's a very smart guy. There's no way Trump would have backed Ukraine to the the extent that uh, Joe Putin Biden has. Putin would not has. have gone into Ukraine in the first place. He was making a comment on the fact that Putin capitalised off of Joe Biden's weakness, which the, was observable by how he bungled the Afghanistan withdrawal. The, well, I'm not going to defend Afghanistan because that, that was, yeah, that, was, that, was that, that was poor. Let me just say, implementing Trump's plan. No, but, no, and, no, and no, no, that's uh, a lie. But, that's a lie. He, but on he Ukraine, moved, he moved yeah, the, the, day. the, the Trump, idea that Trump always said, "No, you can't come on, mate. You can't get away with that." Donald Trump, Trump said he was going to blow up the base. Stand by NATO and stand by Ukraine and stand with Vladimir uh, Volodymyr uh, Zelensky after he tried to muscle Zelensky to give him that's to give him, untrue to give him intel on Hunter Biden. Hold on, Hunter Biden was he on the board of a Ukrainian state-owned gas firm with zero experience whatsoever and doing kickbacks to Joe Biden allegedly? So you don't deny that Donald Trump ha um, uh, made an enemy with Volodymyr Zelensky. You don't, and there's no, no denying no, no, that, on, that, deny that, had, no denying that. that Donald Trump was the man who, yeah, he said, yeah, I'm, yeah, he's the man who was extremely lukewarm on NATO, questioning whether the United States was stand. wasn't lukewarm on NATO. He was saying that you should pay proportionately your fair share to it. That's exactly but, what he was saying. Yeah, no, but... Uh, but would you disagree? What he was basically saying is that why, he was asking, Trump was asking, why should America have to bankroll other members that don't want to pay their fair share? And I would say that's a reasonable observation. Reasonable observation, but Trump is an America first person. Is a, it, What's wrong with that? All politicians should because he America. Because, some, because when you're sometimes... When you stand together ac across the world, that's important. Standing with Ukraine is important. The idea that Donald Trump and the Republican Party, when the people who are his closest supporters, your Tucker Carlson's, your Marjorie Ch uh, uh, Taylor Greens, are saying we should, you know, there's no way this is uh, the way the US should be in involved there. It, the idea that Ukraine could have stood is just, I think, just lacks any form of credibility. And the idea of Vladimir Putin with his tanks on NATO's borders, with a US that's lukewarm about standing up to him, that is an absolutely critical threat to this country. And it's not just, that's not just my view, that's, that's also the view of you know, most, of the, most of this conservative British government. Isn't there a part of you that thinks that it, or wonders if Donald Trump was in power, would Putin have behaved the way that he did your... Because you're making the assumption that absolutely he would have done and it would have been ten times... Is there a part of you that thinks that actually uh, Putin might have had second thoughts about behaving the but, way that he's done? I don't know. But you, you, one doesn't know... You, you know there's a counterfactual and you don't know the thing that didn't happen. But what we do know is that Putin liked Trump because he thought he could roll Trump, because Trump didn't stand up to him, and that he thought that Trump... He, part of Putin's, part of Putin's agenda is to divide Europe and the United States. That's why he likes Trump. Um, and to, and for, the, for the Americans to say in America, and he can, be, he can reassert the USSR in, in, in Europe, for Britain's security... A, pr a, a president, and, you know, Joe Biden is one. George W. Bush similarly would have stood with Ukraine. This isn't a kind of partis necessarily a partisan uh, No, uh, there's a uniparty, I agree. There's a lot of vested financial interests in the military-industrial complex and certain uh, president's children sitting on boards of foreign governments. If I might chime in there, Trump's energy policy was one of the best bulwarks against Putin's invasion and particularly would have helped out the Germans. Now, Trump got up and he was laughed at in the UN when he says you're mad for dismantling your nuclear power stations, which would have made you an abundant energy-sufficient nation. 
and then investing in Nord it's Stream. Not, it's not just a, it's not just Hang a on. Trump Hang on, well, I'll, I'll let you talk for ages. Look. Come on. No. Right, hold on. Right. But, well, so, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, because I'm keen to hear from you. I'm going to uh, cut to a break, and I'm going to hear from you when I return. Otherwise, I'm going to have to squeeze it short, and I'd rather not. So don't go anywhere. You'll be hearing from him and his response in two seconds. Well, two minutes. Hello there, I'm Michelle Jubri and I'm keeping you company right through till 7 o'clock tonight alongside me. Connor Tomlinson is a political commentator and podcast host and Atul Hatwell is the editor of Labour Uncut. Um, just before the break, speaking of cut, I did have to just cut my conversation short, uh, so I shall return to it. We were talking about Joe Biden, whether or not a second term, uh, what that would mean for the UK, would it be a good thing or not? Uh, Connor, I was keen to hear your response to some of the points uh, raised, so go for it. Yeah, Germany would have been energy sufficient if... On Angela Merkel hadn't have systematically destroyed all of their nuclear power plants after Fukushima, and they've just decommissioned their last one this year. Trump decided to warn them against it, and he was laughed at. But then as soon as the Ukraine war breaks out and they're all reliant on Nord Stream, nobody's laughing now. And the Nord Stream mysteriously blows up shortly after Joe Biden says, don't worry, we'll take care of it. Seymour Hersh, who's a prize-winning journalist who's been documenting government corruption since the 70s, has a pretty decent substack on the breakdown of what may have gone on behind closed doors there. But it's awfully convenient that Joe Biden, when he's destroyed America's energy independence by repealing lots of Trump's natural gas manufacturing, by, by the way, which made America from 2017 to 2019 the leading nation in reducing its emissions while also getting its gas price down. So it should have appeased the climate lobby. Um, Joe Biden pretty much on day one cancelled the Keystone XL pipeline and then banned all fracking on federal land. So he's rolled that back. It just so happens that despite his terrible policies, he's now become the main energy supplier for pretty much all of the West that now can no longer buy from Russia and all the OPEC countries. But that also doesn't mean that the American petrodollar isn't being destroyed. That's the global reserve currency. He's pushed a bunch of countries into the arms of China, India and Russia. I don't think Joe Biden's sensible at all and Trump wouldn't have done that. Um, so, I mean, do you want to respond to any of that before we kind of move along a little bit? I mean, just Donald Trump was a... Donald Trump would not have engaged with the rest of the world. Joe Biden has. Donald Trump would not have stood with Ukraine. Joe Biden has. And Joe Biden is, a, is, a, is just a, is a rational, normal American leader. And that's what we in this country... Are going to refute any of my points? just saying that he's a good person because well, well, he's good? Well, so your point about Trump and, uh, German, and German nuclear power... Lots of people have said the Germans shouldn't have dismantled their yes. nuclear power. That, you know, lots of environmentalists have said that. The idea that that's somehow a, a unique insight of Donald Trump is, I didn't say it was unique. is, is, is ridiculous. But, so, we... but Donald Trump did say, I mean, I remember a dinner, and I'm sure, was it um, Jan, Jan Stormberg, the, the NATO guy? I'm sure it was a dinner where they were, and Donald Trump was basically flagging and saying, uh, there's some counterproductive stuff going on here because we're part of NATO, and then you've got Germany so relying on uh, Russian energy, and the, the, the whole thing is kind of counterproductive. And he was kind of basically, like, sneered at, if you like, and, oh, yeah, OK, dismissed. And when you look back on that, actually, he had a point. It's possible for him to have a point. It's equally the case. You know, the best thing with Donald Trump is to listen to him and listen to his supporters. His supporters and all of the people in his orbit say, you know, the Steve Bannons, the Marjorie Taylor Greens, the Tucker Carlsons, say that, the, you know, that, uh, say that Ukraine is some form of global conspiracy. Are you going to address any of my points? Are you just going to say, these people I don't like said things I don't like and therefore you're invalid? No, I'm going to say that they... My point is that Trump would not have stood with Ukraine. The evidence is that the people around him are, are you know, kind of virulently against the supporting war would not Ukraine. Have been drawn Donald out this Trump badly himself, Trump Donald Trump himself said that it's a masterful strategic move by Putin to invade Ukraine. The idea that we would be, we, the idea that we would be currently in a position where Ukraine is standing firm and Russian tanks are that much further away from the UK and NATO boundaries is, I think, it just lacks Sorry, any form think, of credibility. Do you genuinely think any Russia form has intention to invade the UK? I think, no, I think Vladimir Putin would have had designs on countries within NATO and an attack on one and his attack on, is an attack on all. We look at those Baltic states. He, he's made a pretty, uh, he made it pretty evident. He wants to recreate the uh, USSR and the Russian Empire. Do you think we should have NATO true. boots on the ground, essentially, in Ukraine? I think we should support Ukraine such that we don't need to have any boots on the ground. And that means whether it's with air power, 
missiles, everything. The Ukrainians are perfectly capable of doing the job. They just need the support. And a Ukrainian victory is a victory for NATO and a victory I for the UK. I entirely disagree, because even if they win, Russia, China and all of the BRICS nations have all of the hard assets. But even if you wanted to transition to net zero, they have all of that. The Chinese, under their Belt and Road scheme, have all of the rare, precious minerals that you need to do, to do all the renewables that Joe Biden's done. I'm not sure how this relates to Ukraine. Because the point is, we have sunk lots of money into Ukraine. We have sanctioned Russia. We have made a... a an irresolvable enemy of them when they have lots of the resources that we need to get off of the gas. But I'm so, you're saying, so you're saying we should kowtow to Vladimir Putin I never said kowtow. and Don't give him the Ukraine. Me. No, 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 no. I said we shouldn't cut off our nose to spite our face by continually prolonging the conflict and also pursuing policies, which means that we can't have our own natural gas reserves, which would have insulated us from this war. I don't understand the point about national gas reserves. We've got our own. We have North Sea gas. We have. And we're our, not tapping. We, we, Instead, we, we're doubling we, we down have, on renewables. We have. And China have allied with Russia, and we've made sure that relationship is strengthened. So, no matter if Ukraine win or not, we're going to know, get well, you need to go buy from point, them eventually. Well, you actually, because Richard, one of my viewers, says uh, China and Russia, Michelle, should be would would probably be sitting here right now, rubbing their hands when it comes to all of that. I think you make a very interesting point. Philip says he's very pleased that Joe Biden uh, is running again because he says it's the best laugh. He's in ages. Uh, one of my other viewers says it's not about Biden's age, it's about some of the way that he behaves and whether or not he is fit for office.